All right, so we got this uh, Chrysler Pacifica. Uh, I don't remember what year it is, but uh, it is a, uh, the driver said that it had just shut off on them. There was something was like burning in the engine and it just shut off. So I don't know if it's uh, anything else other than that. So let's try to see if we can diagnose this and fix this. And so I blew the horn and I uh, got nothing. So let's see what we get for our battery voltage. So this battery is completely dead. Hmm. That's not good. No battery, we can't really do anything, you know? So. Yeah. Okay, so we had to figure, we had to charge the battery or so we'll see what we can do with that. So let's check the oil. Make sure we don't blow up any engines or... So the engine has a lot of oil, which is good. All right, let's try to turn it over and see what we get. I'm, the, I'm not sure it's doing a lot of clicking sounds, you know. That's a little crazy, right? It's like rapid. Uh, let's try to read some engine code and see what we get. Give us a direction. So if you're wondering, <laughs> the OBD2 connector is right here. That's where it's located on this car. Right, so this is what we have for uh, codes on this one code reader. We have a P0133 intake air temperature sensor. Don't believe that's going to cause us problems that we're experiencing. We have two transmission control module codes. Under voltage, value power feed failure. Hmm. Not sure what those are. And we have anti-lock brake. One occupant, one occupant restraint control module code. And we have two sentry key remote entry modules. So I'm not really getting um, a lot of direction here. Yeah, I don't think the intake temperature sensor is going to be an issue. It's going to cause us just to like have the clicking sound. Um, all right, you know what? Let's uh, let's check and see if uh, we are able to get power to the starter. Let's check the condition of that. So I'm using uh, my um, a different uh, code reader. It's the Kiwi, and I'm using uh, the software is uh, OBD2 Doctor. So you can see here we have. Uh, codes with numbers. So we have an intake air temperature sensor. That's confirmed. Pendant is a fuel level sensor A. Fuel level sensor B performance. Fuel level sensor 2 performance. Transmission control system. Uh, intake air temperature sensor. So... None of these really will, uh, from my experience, will create a clicking sound like that. So I'm not really sure what direction I can get from any of these. So we'll uh, 
we'll proceed and see what else we can find. Like I said, we'll look and see if, what's happening to the starter. So I've got a new battery. Um, it's at 12.6 volts. And uh, see what happens. So we still get the that boop. Uh, we're doing that clicky clicky thing again. Hmm. So nothing seems to be making a difference. Behaves the same way as before. So. Let's try to see how we can isolate this starter. Okay, so this is what's difficult. Uh, the starter, right, is behind this exhaust manifold. You can't get to it from below because there's this, like, cross member here. It's engine, I mean, uh, frame. So it's right here, right? Right here is the starter. So how can I, all the usual things I do to get access to it, I can't, I can't seem to get access to it. There's no, uh, I can't really like touch the starter with a wire to bypass the Right here, this wire here is the one that can, gives the positive from the battery to it. So, basically, I can't get to it, is what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't know. So, I need to find another way to get past the key. So, this is my answer right here. So, in this fuse box, I think. Let's see. This right here. Number seven, 40 amp. One of these is number seven. Okay, up top here. Four, five, six, seven. Four, five, six, seven. So that one there is a starter. Pull that maxi fuse out. That starter should not work. Let's just double check that. Again, one, four, five, six, seven. That one right there. Right, so that was there. We pull that out. Let's go ahead and test it. All right. Yep. So we're looking good. Doesn't do anything when that's out. So we're onto the right path. So let's put that back. As a relay, now we're gonna double check. Okay, so right here is our starter relay, number 23. Alright, that's the relays out. Perfect. Okay. So you hear that? There's nothing. So we know that, that all that, that sound is coming from the starter itself. Alright. So I can almost certainly say that this starter is probably going to be the one that's the failure issue. But we're going to try to bypass this key and we're going to go and jump the relay and see if we get the same the same issue up the front. Okay, so this relay is, uh, it's got five poles, right? And uh, it's hard to see, but right here it tells you how to, uh, how the relay operates. So between 30, 30 is... It's, it's naturally closed at 37A. So 30 to, 30 to 87A is going to be continuity. And then it, when you energize the system, 30 to 87 is what gets closed, all right? So 85 and 86 is where the power comes in, all right? So 30 and 80, 87A should have continuity right now. So you flip it over right? and you look for 30 which is uh, right here. And then you have 87A, which is the center one right here. Right. And you check for continuity between these two. So you would do something like this. So uh, get it in 20 kilo ohms. 
remember, uh, 30 is, uh, let's, let's just make sure, yeah, 30 and, 30 and 87A, so this is 30 right here, 87A, this is 30 right here, 87A is in the middle, so we have continuity, so we know that that is correct. Now we have a battery to alligator clips on them, right? We're gonna energize the system. To energize the system, we're gonna go with uh, uh, 85 and 86. And you can hear the clicking. Okay, so that relay opens and closes right there, okay? So, what do we have? Remember that was like rapidly opening and closing? That's what that clicking sound was. That was that. Uh, so let's do something. We're gonna... Okay. Thank God that's not a BMW, otherwise I'll never get to the bottom. Let's see. 85 and 86 is what we want. Now these numbers are actually written on here, so if you're wondering what do I, how do I know, they're they're on the back of this. Yo, 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 what's up, dude? So, go here. So, in here, right? So you can see that we have a we should have continuity now from the outside pin and the inside. Thir 30 and 87. So we have continuity. Take a look there. And we should have an open circuit here in the middle, 87A. Okay, so that's good. We're on to the right path. I mean, uh, let's just do another test before we uh, move on. Alright, so this fuse right here is the exact same, I mean, sorry, relay is the same one as this one, so let's pull this one out. Put it in here. Well, let's test it and see what happens. Alright, so we switch the uh, relays, let's see what we get. Yep, same thing. So, we need to now do a direct jump to the starter using that relay. Okay, so this is what we know, right? We know that uh, when the system is energized, 30 and 87 is closed. So we're gonna do that right now. So 30 is, again, Eighty-seven is here, so thirty here. The outside ones. So I'm just gonna get an orientation. Thirty, eighty-seven. Okay. Make sure your car is in neutral. Right. Get out of the way just in case. That's 100% guarantee that that starter is uh, incapable of turning the engine. I'm unsure why. Now, is the starter, does it not have enough um, power? That can happen, you know, they uh, they just burn out. Um, but you hear it, it's clicking, but it's not turning the engine over. So, that's where we are right now. One more time so you can see. No bueno.
All right, so we're gonna turn the engine just to make sure that the engine's not seized up. I chucked the wheels because I don't want to have this car move on me. And then we're gonna put this in uh, neutral. So. over here and we're gonna put this in neutral so. step on a brake okay so now we're in neutral okay so down on the uh, passenger side in the front you can see the uh, the crankshaft bolt right here this is gonna this is an 18 millimeter socket right here let me put that on there right and I have it in uh in counterclockwise uh, oh. push that in. okay and then you just want to turn it and you can see the engine will turn so it's not seized so that kind of like gives me an indication that this engine is okay and the starter is 100% the failure. I feel 100% confident that the starter is the failure.